What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy B-Hop Radio Shout in. Stepping in the building, I got a Texas legend and icon off in this thing. Don Key, Lil Kiki, what's good with it, boss? H Time, appreciate y'all for having me. It's an hey, honor. Appreciate, appreciate you, you coming through this thing. Now, I mean, Key, I got to get straight to it. This new project that you done dropped, uh-huh. man. I mean, you got the visuals going crazy. The balls are still doing what they're supposed to do, man. It's legend. Man, Break I- it down to me, boss. Well, um, I've been doing so many projects, man, for the for the last 10, 11 years, and I was just like, you know what? We do so much catalog music, man, for the bottom line. You know, just to eat, we're going to live. I'm going to eat good regardless. I was like, you know what? I want to put a different effort mm-hmm. into this. I want to reach out to my crits and my Juicy J's and my Justice Lee's, all the people that support me, and they were so happy to do work. And like, man, where you been? Come on, let's do it. So the effort and the drive just got to going, and, man, it, it turned out real well. You know what I'm saying? It, it really motivated me. Each time I do a project, it's all about amp- do I want to do it again because I don't have to if I don't want to. Exactly. Yeah. What is it like still repping Texas and putting it down for the town at the same time and then as a legend? Because, see, the name of the album is Legend, uh-huh. but for you to be a legend in your own right as well, I mean, what is it like being that guy, th- doing what only you can do right now? Well, well, that was very important. Like the first single, even we from Texas, it's, yeah. it's, it's big, it's, it's millions and over YouTube. My big thing was we love Georgia. Yeah. We love Florida. We love all these artists. I just remember it meant so much to us to be from Texas yeah. and represent our culture. Name my album. My first album was Don't Mess With Texas. And that was about me loving California music and me loving New York music. But we wasn't able to get the shine that we was at. We was at the bottom of the South. Yeah. So when I came back with this album, I was like, I just want to get these 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 we these are the reasons we make these millions. These yeah. little small towns, these Nacogdoches and Tyler's and Dallas and Austin. Yeah. And I was like, man, I finna make them feel good about themselves just to stand up, man. I did a big drop for them, man, about just being from Texas and still representing everything that you do, but standing up for the state how we used to, man. We used to sell hundreds and thousands out of our own Inside state, the man. State. And and we missing that, and it's a lot of people that go outside the state now to get it, as much love as they knew, which is fine. So my big job all the way from 25 years ago was to still rep Texas and bring it back to where we were supposed to be. Answer me this, though, Kiki. Why do you feel like people don't rep their towns and their states and their cities like they used to? Because it was the same thing in Atlanta. You know, we had the DSGB with Troy and everybody else, you know, proud as hell around this thing. But nowadays it's just everybody's just making music and just coming out and most ain't really of the repping. Time, most of the time, man, um, even when I was city, sometimes affect being from our city, being a street star and, and, a, and a star in the city is very it's something, you know. Yeah. I tell a lot of young rappers, some of them get to become stars in the city, they don't even care about moving outside of the city. Mm-hmm. But what I think it is on the opposite side of it is, man, people get so used to seeing and, and being around the rappers. You know, you humble, yeah. man, you starting to eat with him at this restaurant, you start to see him at this <laughs> club, you 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 know, you buying this from you doing so. I think they get kind of in the love and the admiration and the the, the enjoyment of being around the artists, they getting that love from outside, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's a lot of why people gravitate out because your fans are out. People become more, I, my partners do it like, I. sometimes me and my partners, they hang around, we so used to playing dominoes and kicking it. When we go out and they see who I really am outside, they be like, damn, you know, <laughs> yes. you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he really somebody outside, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I think the the the, the aspect of just being so close in town, but you know, it's all man. Hey, when I come here, see, like y'all got great love for y'all artists. And well, now it's all love. Is the is I feel like folks ain't repping this hard because see, you know, people had to put it on the map. Yeah, you see what yeah. I'm saying. So the folks from the '90s era, the early generations, like a bankroll fresh. Bankroll was draped in his Atlanta. You know, Jersey, rain, I'm, everything. I'm still like that. You see what I'm saying? I'm so like we that. knew where that man was from. Yeah. You don't really get that out of people no more. It's just like you folks is just doing their thing. You see what people, I'm saying? People are more interested in in um pleasing the masses. Yeah. Instead of you know, it the meant core. everything to me to, exactly. to be from I'm just the name of my brand, seven thirteen. I'm wearing so, it right now. It's, that's the Houston area code. And yeah. I've always, I got my own day. It's my day in the city, getting oh, ready to hard. come up, 713 day, I 713 day. Yeah. So I'm all, everything that I do is go back to what I do. Don't, met, um, we from Texas, 713 day, self-made, um, it, whatever I do, it's all about my culture, my roots. I never got from that. 
And that's what I mean. I survived off of it. Okay, Key. I mean, I need you to take me back to day one, though, man. <laughs> because see, my thing <laughs> is when you look up and you got your own day, mm-hmm. when you was running around with Screw Them, did you feel like I was going to have my own day in this thing if I kept on rapping? Nah. Nah. You see what I'm it, saying? It took me 10 years to figure out that this was a professional job for real. <laughs> like, you know, like, we were just running around getting to it. We came straight from screw tapes getting money. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, we was doing screw tapes 16, 17, 18 years old. And the next thing you know, man, I had one song, Pimp the Pen, and I was getting $3,000 a show to do that in 1996. My that God. was like $10,000 to be a song, yeah, yeah. you know, at the yeah, time. Yeah. So, nah, I didn't see that because I wasn't even really entrenched in a in being an artist or yeah. being a professional man i just was freestyle rap. i still was hustling really yeah. really the point so now man so to come full circle man 25 it's actually my 25th anniversary this year don't to my uh, to don't mess with taste we did a 20th anniversary five years ago it seemed like that was just yesterday <laughs> you know what i'm saying and it was a ball so this year is going to be the 25th anniversary man and um it's a blessing man to even still be getting the opportunities to come see you yeah. at this stage of my career well i mean you a legend though so with that being said Another legend, DJ Screw. How did y'all even link up, Key? Uh, Screw was the bar. My barber was Screw Barber. Okay. When we were young, you know, my barber. I'm talking about some 17, 18-year-old barber, 16-year-old. So I could tell people all the time, the first time me even was doing a Screw tape, it wasn't even about me enjoying it or what. Screw wasn't even had nothing going on. This was about my neighborhood. Mm. My, My partner went and made a tape. At Screw House, I couldn't give a damn about the significance of Screw. I was worried about the tape in my neighborhood was floating. My partner was becoming real yeah. major off of that. So my first time going to Screw House was just a, a hookup between a friend of mine yeah. who got his hair cut. And, man, it started from now. My first time I went, I got a tape. The second time I went, I went with a friend of mine in the hood, one of my partners. And we took off from that. We took Screw by Storm. That was me and Duke. I came back again and done my own solo tape. And from there... I took off, that was probably 94, 95. By the time 96 got here, we were star stars. <laughs> yeah. What was that like doing them time laying down on freestyles and just seeing that fan base start to grow? Beautiful because I tell people all the time, we we didn't have it planned. I always bring up the Swish House era and Michael Washington. They kind of had it planned. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they going over there like, um, Slim, them and comedian, they going over there to make a tape. We went over to Screw House to be cool. Damn, you know what I'm saying? We wasn't, we didn't know nothing about a fan base is coming. So all those freestyles, they organic. We didn't, we didn't go there to do a freestyle for you to hear. It. Yeah, this was about the neighborhood and the the people who made tapes. It was all about them hearing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we didn't even know that none of this was going to transpire. None was going to come till about. 95, 96, when we got to do three in the morning and yeah. now it's starting to pick up. And and even before then, me and Fat Pat was doing tapes and Screw was opening the door at seven o'clock, selling a thousand of them, you know, 1,200 <laughs> of them times $10, you know what I'm saying? And, and this wasn't even, and when I tell people that all the time, Screw don't owe us a dollar, we weren't even looking at it like that. Yeah, yeah. This was our partner. We exactly. was, you know, what I gained off of it, the accolades, the success, becoming a little Kiki, that's all he really owed me off of it. Like, yeah. when Screw was made out, man, Screw made this money. Did y'all, man, we weren't even thinking about getting paid because exactly. we was over there really enjoying his hobby. Yeah, yeah. What was it like seeing that those Screw tapes was taking over Texas and then they were also moving around the country at the same time as well? Well, well, well the first, the, some of the first, um, Crazy things about that was when we first started kind of tapping to doing a concert. Uh, oh man, they man, we gonna have a concert. You man, this yeah. is so crazy. We have slightest idea how to do a concert. We end up rapping the whole song, all the song by six minutes. We rapping the whole. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I can't even do a second verse. Yeah, on, on at a show, but um, man, we start doing these little shows, and man, these people were singing this shit like yeah. Real songs, like, like man, these freestyles. And yeah, to yeah. this day right now, I got the most sample freestyles ever. You know what I'm saying? Like every every rapper, every big rapper in our city has got, they all, and all those samples come from freestyle. Chunk up the dudes, I'm a yeah. G, um, draped up, knocking those down, um, screwed it already, warm it, great cassette, all these different samples, and they come from freestyles. And at the time, we never knew none of that was gonna happen. How do you feel though, Key, being one of the most sample artists out of Texas? People as well? be thinking that I would I would be going so 
crazy about it. I tell you why I don't, man. I haven't missed out on nothing that God got for me. I ain't That's missed right. out on nothing. And it play a lot into my relevance. Mm. I wouldn't trade my relevance. I wouldn't say, y'all don't do that. I wouldn't say, man, get rid of all them samples if it was going to take away my relevance. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Them With samples you. is kind of sort of why I'm still here today. You Thanks. know what I'm saying? So at the same time, the ones that I'm supposed to, I mean, Drake then came back and pay, pay, paid me for samples. Mm. Um, Logic. People out of the blue. Drake didn't even sample nothing. He just came and paid me for saying draped up and dripped out. Something that I see. <laughs> and, and he just paid me for it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, man, man, that was a slip. And I took that as, look at all the samples that I missed money on. And then out the blue at the end of my career, the biggest artists in the world come pay me homage for a sample. Same thing with the Logic. Yeah. You know, Logic came do the same thing. So the ones that I missed out on, and most of the time, man, they in, they from artists that's from my city who know about my culture, who know about me, who grew up me, so I'm not really tripping on it. And at this point, man, let me tell you something, man. It's so many of them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I get people who call me to do them, and I be like, you know, they already did that one like 15 times. You know what I'm saying? That You know, they did that one eight times. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the samples, but the screw tapes is a very, very, very important part of our culture. They built our city, and man, it's not too many rappers. I don't care. Now, maybe Travis Scott and a couple new rappers, but for the most part, Every rapper got a part of that screw tape history into their game. That's right. Yeah. With you being in the thick of it, though, Key, what do you think it was about that time that caused everybody to go out legends? Man, I think because um, the culture that's that's built in Houston, it, 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 we so in, we, we so attached to ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. as far as drinking and haircuts and look yeah. and swag and and you know, we really we wasn't the people who went out and tried to. We gonna bring Dayton's to the city, or we gonna even from hairstyle. We are gonna bring. It's always been about us. So these people that's legendary, they legendary from what they put into the culture and the things that man that that run from ninety five to two thousand is a very important of Houston part of culture yeah, yeah. because it built how we look, how we sound, how we talk, the lingo, and most of these people that stars they stars from a different part of that. Whether it's they lingo, yeah, yeah. they swag. When you talking about a fat pat, fat yeah. pat was a very very, you know what I'm saying? He real flamboyant. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and he made being big cool and Thanks. and a lot of his talk. And me and him, we battled. We we had friendly battles, but it, it shaped the culture of the city. So that's how a lot of people became legend. It's legend city. I hear people like, man, what make man? It's not about <laughs> the sales. It ain't about. It's about what we did for that culture because these people still living off that culture right now. And people should understand, though. That's the other thing. I don't even want to hear nothing about somebody talking some what make. N nigga, you should understand what the hell's going on around here, man. Come on. They don't sometimes. When it's time for the South Side, though, man, you've been freestyling going crazy, then you drop this single. And that thing goes nationwide, too. Mm -hmm. What was that like when you had everybody doing the South Side? And then what was it that made you bring the dance to the game, too? Man, I'm not a dancer. <laughs> let's, let's get this understood. I'm trying to I make sure that I surprise. I'm not a dancer. Man, listen, we used to just be kind of joking around and tripping and talking about South Side and shocking around. This was a thing. Now, South Side was crazy because, like you say, every, it's well documented. The South Side and North Side of Houston, we didn't get along. We didn't like each other. We didn't yeah. have. We So, South Side... Um, it wasn't accepted at mm. first as far as radio standpoint. It was real controversial. The dance is what kind of gave it the legs to go. And and that kind of was just, man, Southside has got two or three different versions. We have a version that even had a dancing part in it. When I came home from doing a little time, I made Southside. Mm. It didn't even have a dance in there. It was a whole different wording. Yeah. But when I came back, I just was playing around, shocking rock and do the South Side. Yeah. Man, that wasn't nothing, man. People really think like we did made up a day. It yeah. really wasn't like that, but it took legs. And what's crazy, be how it's bigger now than <laughs> right then. And I don't know if that's from social media and yeah. visuals and whatever, but yeah. it's bigger. It was times, man, I wanted to be through with it. Mm. Man, I was so tired of it, man. I don't want to dance no more. I don't want to South Side no more, Knees hurting. I mean, answer me this, Kiki. You, cause see, that's, <laughs> I, I hear that a lot from a lot of folk. When they song go viral and it goes crazy mm -hmm. and you have to perform that thing because the fans need it. So what was that like for you going from freestyling and then being in demand in a hot commodity in the streets at the same time too and having to work now? 
Well, well, I, w- I w- we was already kind of dibbing at it a little bit, coming out of the screw tapes with the DEA yeah. and, and the different things. I always had that knack in me. So this is a true story, man. Fat Pat wanted to do his whole album freestyle. We was that good. You know what I'm saying? We, Man, I tell people all the time, if I would have dropped Don't Mess With Texas as a freestyle album, it probably wouldn't have made the impact that it made or been, but it would have been accepted. Yeah. Because they was waiting for that. They yeah. really wanted that. But... All Don't Mess With Texas is is organized freestyle. Mm. I just decided to take that freestyle and organize it. All these different things that I'm saying about candy and coming down and holding, I'm finna just mix it up. Man, it's nothing, that is nothing that can rhyme with blue, red, or that I haven't said. Yeah, yeah. Red like a Coke can, blue like a pep, did, I done did it all. <laughs> exactly. So I just organized all that up, and man, people were so shocked to hear that format because mm. they were expecting, coming down, they was expecting that. Yeah. We were hot from that. So, man, you know, when I done Don't Mess With Texas, that's why I tell people all the time, it's the reasonable doubt, it's the blueprint of the South, because it's the first one that broke the barriers to that type of particular music being accepted. Man, to, from the South Side to the Bouncer Turn to the Pimp the Pins, it was organized freestyle. It was culture and lingo that we were already doing, and I just organized it in a way that, and it took off. With Don't Mess With Texas, did you feel any stress or pressure being that one that had to put it down for the town? I always been that one. Okay. I always been the one. You know what I'm saying? I always, um, the reason I'm the people's champ, man, is because I'm the villain at yeah. the same time. I can, yeah. <laughs> and it's hard being the people's champ and the villain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I, I get to, I get to go see B High and I get the accolades and I get to do it because I get the ridicule. Yeah. And I get the, I get the derogatory and I get the, what about this? And he didn't do that. I'm the one that can stand up for all that. So the other part that come with it and being the legend was easy yeah. to do. So, yeah, it was, a, it was this, it was that. I've been through hell with, from that transition to the next transition, but, it all come with it. I wouldn't change nothing. Break down the ridicule and the hate and just the BS that came along with it. Where was this stuff coming from when you was out here just trying to jam? Well, well, at the end of the day, man, you know, even from people always have their, like, our town is very split between sides, where it was. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Where it was at the time. So being the chosen, and, and at the same time, man, we all came up in the screw tape era of, we always be a legend. Well, you got Hawk, Pokey. Yeah. So being the chosen one and being the one in the front, and then a lot of my partners was dying. You know, some of the other favorites, people that they wanted, yeah. Fat Pat is died, Scrooge died, yeah. Hawk died, Big Moden died. So people always had their own favorites. So it wasn't just so much about ridicule. It's about me having to carry the torch in 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 situations where it wasn't always ideal. Yeah, Not yeah. just carrying a torch because it's getting handed to me, carrying the torch because people have left, people exactly. died. Exactly. And man, that position ain't for everybody. Everybody's not prepared to carry that. Mentally though, Kiki, how did you deal with it when folks started passing though? Um, let me let me tell you what I what I was it's not a benefit, but what I would say would help. I was too young to understand. Mm. You gotta understand, Fat Pat, my rival, my my best friend, he died. I'm 21 when he died. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm 20. I'm not like I'm 30. I'm not a, you know, I'm not. So, and I tell people all the time, man, it's life is crazy the way it don't stop. Yeah. I always remind mm. my life don't stop. I be tell people all the time, partners dying on Mondays, niggas going to jail. I mean, going to Vegas on Friday. Yeah. Partners dying Friday, niggas picking up their gas and going to the concert Saturday. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Life don't stop, man. We can cry right now about somebody. We still gonna get gonna get something to eat and smoke yeah. a square. So life don't stop. And when you younger, yeah. it really moving on. So, you know, being the one to have to carry the torch, and that's what I mean, man. It ain't hasn't always it's it's been questioned. What about the SUC? They didn't do this, so they didn't know how many hits they got. I had to be the one that keep on going from the Swisher House thing to now to rolling and putting it on my shoulder. Exactly. Yeah. Songs like I'm a G, one of my personal favorites mm-hmm. right there. I mean, can you break down creating that banger? That's a crazy song. Yeah. That's the only song I bought with me to the Swisher House deal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? To the to the T Fair. We they they was like cause every deal I do, they want to see do I got another south side. <laughs> and I keep t- I keep telling this man, I can't redo it again. <laughs> it's not working out. We've yeah. tried fifty times. The only one that made a little all right was with me and eight ball. That yeah. went other than that, every company from Koch to Universal, when we sit at the table, oh we lo- do you think we're gonna get another south side? I'd be like, we not gonna get it. 
You know what I'm saying? So I, I had to, they was like, man, what do you have? I was like, man, I got this one song mm -hmm. that I done that I want to recreate. And man, the version that y'all hear in the I'm a G, we actually done it five times. My God. Because T Ferris is a perfectionist. He just had me, man, give me another version until G the ass just came in. Like, man, this, this is the version. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to keep that. And um, it turned out great because it's a true story. And it had, it wasn't always my favorite song because I'm a, I'm a lyricist. Yeah. I, I'm really into my music. And it wasn't a song that I really felt like I was able to show my skills on the way I was something, but it's me just telling my story. <laughs> like he Nigga, you snapped on that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's just me telling the story. But it's a true story. The whole story of it is true. Exactly. So and, uh, I think, um, and it's a real big song, and I really appreciate um, the collaboration of that. Like I tell people, everything that I went through with doing the Switch House deal, I wouldn't get that song back. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't get that back. I need that. Come on now. Yeah. Lining up and going over there with Switch Your House, man. Uh -huh. What was that like? It was hell. Damn. It was hell. It was hell. It was hell. You mm -hmm. know? <laughs> it was different. You know, because we was losing the race. Damn. You know, like, as far as in the city, as far as, let me tell you what I mean by losing the race. Not like they actually in straight competition with us, but this style of music and what they're particularly talking about and how they're doing it, it came from us. Yeah, yeah. That's just the truth of the matter. This this lingo, this type of talk, and to see that the world, see all the work that we put in yeah. to try to make that happen, and now to see that it's working and we're not really even a part of it. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, it was tough, but we all had different situations. We had deaths. Yeah. At the time, I had warrants, and we was just down. So, Switch House tried to sign me or come for six months. Yeah. And I was turning it down. I was turning it down. I didn't take a quarter. I didn't take a dollar as, as rich as they were. I need to talk to y'all about that right now. <laughs> y'all owe me some money, right? <laughs> now, it wasn't about money. Yeah, yeah. It was about an opportunity. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I was in a little trouble, and I just really wanted to get some music and get some work done before I got into deeper trouble. And that situation actually saved me out of the trouble. My so God. God blessed me in that. So it was tough being from the south side, getting ready to do a deal with the north, being the captain of the SUC, getting ready to go to the rival north side, switch house. It was a lot, mm. but nobody couldn't do it with me. I and it. I just felt like I had the skill. I knew one thing. I'm going to rap my way out of this shit. Yeah, yeah. So when it's 10, 15 years later, would I give up Chunk Up the Deuce? And would I give up yeah. I'm a G? Would I give up Love by Few? Would I give up the Gangsta Grill? Now, all that is really got a lot to do with the furthering of my career. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So the Switch House deal was great, man. And Chunk Up the Deuce, it realigned the North and the South back the way it's supposed to do. And if I go back 12 years and have to do that deal again, I'll do it again. Okay, then. Yeah. I mean, I was watching my boy Donnie Houston podcast, and mm -hmm. you said you was on the run for 10 goddamn years, Kiki. Yeah. Nigga, you was doing the running man for 10 years? Hey, man, listen. You got to know how to run. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you you have to know how to run. It's a certain set of discipline that go with that. And I miss that. And that's why I'm so hyped up now. Yeah. I ain't got to know now. That's why I'm buying up cars. And yeah. Gear. I'm having a great time right now. Because it was a time in my life, man, I was put up for 10 years straight. Couldn't do what I need to do. I signed with Swisher House under an alias name. Man, they was booking me flights. I had one name on the contract. They was booking me flights under another day. They was like, man, what is he doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I was like, and, and, and I ended up finally getting caught and getting in some trouble and um it cost me a hundred K to get out. Mm. And uh Switch House gave me fifty grand up front to get it done. That's hard. And and it, and the thing about it, I'm bringing up the numbers to say there no wrong that they could do. Yeah. G Dash, T Fair, none of them. I don't care what they do. They don't owe me nothing. Yeah. Because in the time of my need, I'm a street cat man. That particular situation helped me get out of a ten year run. I done three months I ran for 10 years to do three months Whew. and came out and saved my whole life, changed my life, got my life back on track. So God sent me over there for the right reason. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's if I wouldn't have went over there if I would have got out of the situation that I was in. Exactly. So, right. yeah. I mean, running for 10 years, though, I mean, what kind of stress was going through your mind during that time? I tell people it'd be crazy stresses like this. Like, I couldn't watch no jail movies. <laughs> you know, like, 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 like jail like, movies. <laughs> all that, I don't want to see it. Like, little shows that was coming on about the penitentiary. I don't yeah. know, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I dreamed about the penitentiary every day for 10 years. Nigga, you know what? what I'm saying? Because I'm because when you running, you lie every year. Yeah. What I mean by that, I'm gonna go and do it for Christmas. <laughs> um, right after my baby birthday, I'm gonna do it this time. 
I ain't gonna lie. Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving this time, that's it. That's it. You know, I done said that about 10 Thanksgiving, about 10, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's also hard being in a situation where I tell people, I've been on the road for 25 years. I do probably more shows than anybody. I'm mm. a show monster. I probably do 70, 80 shows a year. Still, um, I never caught a case on the road. Man, we didn't been on that mama with pints, yeah, ice is weed it, for years. Yeah, I never caught. This was the first time I caught a case on the road, and and I caught a case, and it was nothing but behind a square. Man, we got one square, one weed square. Caught the case, but I'm glad that I did because if I wouldn't have, I was gonna keep running. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah. gonna keep running and running and running. I had, man, I had fake IDs. Yeah. The real fake IDs. Not these ones like y'all go to the club. I'm <laughs> talking about bad motherfuckers. <laughs> Driver license, everything. The real get pull you over yeah, police. Yeah. I only got caught because I ended up going to a small country town. Mm. And when we went to jail, they still had roll-on print. Oh, Lord. This how long ago they had roll-on print. <laughs> so I bonded out under the fake name. Yeah. And the prints came back. So when the prince came back to the small country town, they wanted me to, I wanted to get probation in the small country town. And I was going to drive by and out there, everybody, <laughs> and do it. But they were seeing something on some, who in the, man. So they, they came up with a play of, Man, we're gonna transfer that back to Houston. Okay, okay. And, and you stay too far out of, this, out of this jurisdiction to let us let you go to probation. As soon as I went to that probation the first time, they got me. <laughs> I knew they were gonna get me too. I'm like, man, it's gonna come to an end. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I had to go, man, and I felt bad for Swish House at the time because I hadn't really told them. Ooh. And that's the reason why I really respect them too because one day I just called them, I just need 50 dollars <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize But it. I hadn't took nothing. Yeah. And we had made cake, you know what I'm saying? We had ABA, we had Chunk of the News, I hadn't yeah. took nothing, so God blessed me to be able to do that. So I really respect them. So as far as some north side, south side, and all that, none of that really matters when when it comes to that situation, it's all about, you know, my um, my growth and longevity and what it took me to get back to who I am now. 25 lighters on my dresser. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's one of my other bangers <laughs> right there, man. Mm. Talk to me about that, Bob, and how that came about. Same thing. DM, DJ DMD was a big fan of the SUC. Mm -hmm. One day he invited the whole clique out to Beaumont. Mm. And um, I'll never forget that. We went out there. You know, at this time, man, we so happy to be ex invited to something that got to do with we finna be some rappers for real. <laughs> <laughs> like, we not rappers for real yeah, yet. Yeah. So we getting invited to, man, we finna go. Man, we done piled up in the car, went down here, me, C-Note, a bunch of us. Yeah, yeah. And DJ DMD, man, he really got us, if you know what I mean. We just, we was so freestyle happy. Yeah. Every time he would turn it on, we were freestyling. And that's just some, the same way the rest of these samples is. 25 Lighters was something I had already said on another freestyle. I had got mm. it from MJG. Yeah. Saying, that's my boy. I love him. MJ. And Bob with him and Bob. I love I yeah. messed with him the other week when I came. Mm. We close. So that was, but what MJ said and what I said was two different translations. I was talking about 25 Lighters on my dresser as far as we smoking so much. That's how many, you know, that's how many, you know, lighters we got because we smoke all day. That yeah. was my reference to it. And DJ DMD just actually, to be honest, he might have had the first big Kiki sample. Mm. That's the first big one. And I never, you know what, man, as I'm talking, <laughs> I never bring it up when I'm bringing up the samples. Yeah. I never be like, yeah, 25 lighters, you know what I'm saying? That's me too. Come you know on. And that's from a freestyle also. You know My what I'm God. saying? All them from freestyle. So at the end of the day, man, that was a little bit, we had a little controversy about that that um song a couple of years ago. Because you know, ZZ topped and used it. Mm-hmm. They didn't use it on movies. Yeah. And and I always tell people, man, it goes back to the same thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give away my relevance. Yeah. To be worrying about if I missed a few dollars, because I ain't missed no money anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, coming out of Texas, you got folks like UGK too, man. I mean, you was at the verses going crazy as hell. What were your thoughts on that versus? And then also just talk about some of that history between you, Bun, and the pimp. Man, um, I was so happy to get a versus like that because I don't, you know, I didn't really think we would get. And when I say South, like I love whatever y'all doing from the Gucci Man to yeah. the G's and them. But I, you know, we, I didn't know we was going to get something groovy like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's groovy. Yeah. That's us. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, man, I had something to do. Bond, I'm talking about, man. 
man, I'm on my way. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I really like people. A lot of people was like, man, it wouldn't have been fair in Houston. Yeah. Even though Ball and G, we love them it's in Houston. Love Ball, one of my best friends. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but in Houston, it would have been crazy. So a lot of people from our area, they was just they so they. People so hung up from seeing the um, the Jada kiss yeah, yeah. them one and from the crowd. If they would have did that at State Farm, they would have got the same thing. Yeah, they would have got the same thing. Yeah, like I was telling folks, that ticket was the hottest goddamn ticket in the city. I just think that maybe they were just trying to keep it cool and they didn't want it to be out of control. But, but, but I told people from the standpoint of I wasn't coming here really looking for like it's finished to be. I thought this was for like from a filming standpoint, like you know for the for thriller yeah. and 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 Instagram and all that. Now the crowd participation is great, but I was more excited about the people, the online, visuals, you know, yeah. the visuals online of people getting their sit. Hey man. It, it wasn't nothing bad that could happen with eight ball and MJG and UGK doing the first. I don't, I don't care. You know, what and I'm saying? I agree with that too. Whatever they do, I don't care if it was thirty, ten, right? Man, this eight ball. Yeah, man, listen, man, I sung my ass off. Me too. All night. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me real, too. Bro. I'll let the rehearsal. Come on. <laughs> I said, man, I don't know. I'm gonna make the show. I'm at the rehearsal. I'm turned up. You know what I'm saying? So Come on. it was good, bro. I loved it. Exactly. I had a good ass time too. I just wish more folks could experience it because, it, like I say, that ticket was so damn. My phone was on goddamn fire, Kiki. Now I know what I. I wish we would have got to do. We was gonna do this before, and um, this probably would have been great. Once before, Bun was putting together a show in our city, and me, Slim, Paul, Zero. All the rest of the legends, yeah. we was gonna do all the pimp parts. Oh my god! We was fighting over murder. Oh, <laughs> we, we, we were fighting over. Shit. My, I want it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what I thought Bond was gonna try. But then just man, pimp in spirit in here, that was, was great. Was in too. there? You know yeah. what I'm saying? But at first, one time we was gonna do a concert, and Bond was putting it together, and we was all getting parts, pimp parts from other songs. So exactly. that would have been great. But just pimp and spirit, man, I felt pimp spirit. And, hey, man, let me tell you something. Some of them songs Bun were doing, I was like, damn. Yeah. Man, yeah. Man, Bun, they <laughs> right now. I forgot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was really loving it. You know what I'm saying? So, and Ball and G, that's my that's my favorite duo. Come on now. Yeah. Come on. The rodeo, though, because that was crazy as hell, too. <laughs> Speak on it. <laughs> <laughs> that goddamn rodeo. That's the biggest we ever did. My God. That's the man. Listen, I done performed at every stadium in the city. This was a big thing we was having. I was talking some shit one day mm -hmm. on Bun. Yeah, I'm the only artist that performed in every <laughs> stadium in this city. Yeah, Boy, they went to talking shit when I said that, but I did. And um, <laughs> <laughs> but I did. Yeah, this yeah. was next level though. Yeah, this was seventy three thousand. Man, listen, man, this was 73,000. Like, we didn't know they was down with the culture like that. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> we know they gone. Man, the city, man, I was state lovers for. Come on. 73,000? We was nervous, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, but I was scared as hell. We were nervous. We, and, we, and we some of the toughest niggas in the world. We were nervous. I was like, I ain't gonna lie. Because let me tell you something. Me and Slim got some shit that be going on. We can't remember words. Ooh. When they not getting played, we we bad with the words. You know? So we was like, I'm telling you, when you get up there, I'm going to just start doing shit so you can fuck your words. I want you to fuck. I'm a, yeah. we, we playing, but we all we knocked it down. We didn't do no bunch of rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Man, we knocked it down. Let me tell you something what I think, too. Sometime in the city, man, we get a little divided because mm -hmm. it's every man for itself and everybody got something going on. Not in a man to see all that. Mm. And it was just like for one night. I don't care if I was mad at you in November. Yeah. I love you right now in February, right now. Yeah. And I think that that rodeo did so much for us um, is getting back together as far as that. Man, whatever, whatever you met, because everybody was there. I can recall one time where Texas had the spotlight on them and it was fire hot. Mm -hmm. What do you think it was that caused everybody to get mad at each other and hell start breaking loose? Over? We so used to being independent. Yeah. That's just it, man. We so... We so used to being independent, man. When you give us too much made, we just get too <laughs> crazy. We so used to being independent, man, and we so self-made. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I just think that... Um, 
I don't know, man. We we root for each other, but at the same time, it's always competition. That's anywhere. That's in music, period. And I just think that, man, you know, we we're not. We didn't wake up with Def Jam and 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 Epic and all that on the corner. You know, I always tell people that, man. When you go up in California, man, you know, Interscope down the street and yeah, you know, Capitol Records on the. We grew up out of this trunk and it's so, so that never really leaves, man. That's yeah. like me, man. I got fifty albums. Woo. You know what I'm saying? Fifty five. I, I don't lost count actually. Yeah, Legend probably about number fifty six or something. I don't know. My you know God. what I'm saying? So we so caught up into that kind of mindset of not wait. And 56 of those albums that I got, it's not about no sales. Mm. It's about, which is sold a lot, and I make a lot of money off of it, but I own it. Mm -hmm. It's mine, and it's more of a testament. I always believed in music. Yeah. When everything got bad, when, you know what I'm saying, I never had turned back to the streets. I never. I just always believed in music. It was, it was the time I dropped. 12 albums in a year mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and that's helped me get to streaming before i even knew that it was coming so a lot of people man is the success of being in a major situation and different people and now we're not used to i guess we wasn't used to artists going and going platinum and then we used to, hey man i need to get a verse from you <laughs> well you know the people say you have to get the paperwork now we weren't used to all yeah. that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And now I think we're more mature into that because let me tell you something, man. It's as independent as I am. My label, I got it. It's, it's upstarting. I'm getting ready to do big thing. I'm trying to get the get your deal. Exactly. Man, you better go get you. I don't care. Get I don't care what you get, man. But let them people put you on the road. Go enjoy life. Go do it, man. If, Independent is great. I don't know if it's for everybody. Yeah, you have to be strong enough. You have to have mind. You have to have discipline to understand how to work, how to do this here. And some people need the structure of the bread. And everybody's not able to handle the bread and be independent and do it themselves. Yeah. I tell people all the time, it's just like fixing up cars. Some of the people that fix my cars, they shouldn't be the business people. They should just be fixing the car. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? he's a great <laughs> car fixer. When you start getting to the money, it's, exactly. it's crazy. It's the same thing with the music. Some people need the backing and all that. Mm. Being the boss and being the independent and being an entrepreneur, that's not for everybody. That's and right. that's, not a, that's not a bad thing, man. I've seen people being broke bosses and rich teammates. Come on. You know Come what I'm saying? So, my Thank God. The Bun and the Pimp, though, man. When mm -hmm. did you first meet them, and what was it like when you connected with them early on? I love Bun and Pimp. What They gave us inspiration mm. as, as, that we could really do. Hey, man, putting the tape out was something back yeah. then. That wasn't like, you know, like right now, you wake up, put it out in five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a tape out tonight. Come on now. Back then, this was like having to do something. Yeah. Man, you got to do this, mix it, and master it, and then somebody got to put it up and press it. So... Bun them being from small Port Arthur and actually putting out a tape, man, we was inspired, pocket full of stuff, man. We thought they was just as big as Tupac to be. Yeah. Cause they didn't actually did it and we write bombs. So Bun them, we met them early because they caught our vibe early. As mm -hmm. far as hey man, the boy down there, he, they was on all that. Man, Bun them is another example of our culture getting being able to speak about it and getting it out, you know, talking about this drinking and this yeah. driving, this Cadillac and how we was doing it. That was a part, a big part of our culture. So I respected them early, man, as being a group that got it done. I didn't know what kind of money they was making, what kind of, they just got, hey man, if you had a tape in the show, yeah. I'm driving the side wave and your tape right there. Yeah. Man, you somebody to me. Come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause we over here on these school tapes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We ain't made it to the store yet. So we met them early and um, we started doing music. Hey man, getting a song from Pimp C and Bun, to me was just like getting one from Scarface. Come on. In, in the beginning, you know what I'm saying? So. 25 years later for Bun to still be inviting me to the rodeo, still be inviting me to the verses. He on my new album. Come on. Just got off the phone with him 10 minutes ago. Talking Come about on. a hot ass video outside. <laughs> so, what up though, Bun? And, and, and it goes back to what your original, what you're talking about. Just a mat. I respect him, but look, man, I'm talking to Bun B. Right? Yeah. That's how we get sometimes. Mm -hmm. Where he is now, watch this. I might be a whole different way if that's Andre 3000. Yeah. Man, that's Andre 3000. 
But Bond, it might pop. Man, what's that? Hey, yeah. Download something. And it gets like that. And I think I sometime, that. man, that's how it be. That's why people, the repping part, the questions you was asking, because people be so familiar with people. It's nothing for me to walk in a restaurant and Slim, me and Slim just went to Jamaica. Yeah. It's nothing for Zero to FaceTime me. It's nothing for Big Poke. Me and Big Poke, we sit on the phone talk about bacon all day. <laughs> so, so it's nothing for me to see these people. And I think that that's how sometimes we it we don't revere them as much because they be so close to us. As exactly. Friends. Yeah. Studio sessions, going in there recording with them boys, man. Yeah. I mean, what was that like even with Swisher House, UGK, and SUC? Ask them. <laughs> I'm the one you want to come see in that lab. All right, now. You know what I'm saying? So I've been a monster in that lab. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm always a goosebump type of guy in the lab. So I love the energy of seeing them mm -hmm. see me from uh, coming from the Screw State. Bond is a, a master in it. Pimp C is a... Is a is a musician, mm -hmm. man. That's really pimp singing all them. Yeah, yeah, that's him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying making the beat. So that that it's it's still amazing. And um, I I was saying me, man, not from a just joking around, but I, for me, my mm -hmm. transition of coming from freestyling to, and the reason why I say me is because man, I tested all man from an A dat yeah. to a, to a, to a real by real yeah. to a net. Right now, I can't be in the studio past one hour. <laughs> I be asking them young cat. They say, man, we've been in the lab all night. I be hitting the, what y'all were doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what y'all were doing in there? <laughs> hey, man, I can't, hey, listen, man. I'm in the studio at 12, I'm out at 1.30. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I done wrote everything at the house. And came yeah. Hey, man, my engineer had to start working this. He wasn't making no money. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like, man, you done done seven raps. And man, to pay me $50 for this hour. <laughs> so I was like, man, let me start looking at it because I don't hang. But like back in the game, I used to. So I yeah. still promote it now. I get in there with like, I'm going to go see Drummer Boy today. Me and Crit. I you know it. what I'm saying? Me, yeah. now, you get in there with Crit. That's in a, a hell of a two hours. Come on You know now. what I'm saying? So, But for the most part, man, you know, working with those legends like Bun and and um, Scarface, I done been in the studio with them all. And, um, it's still an honor to see it, man. We all so just straight to it now, but back in the game, it used to be a, a honor to watch it, though, for real. Exactly. Getting there with Crit, I mean, me and my old school, that's another one of those classic bangers right there as well, man. Yeah. Can you talk about y'all chemistry and then still working with him to this day? Crit, um, I was I was so honored that he, um, see, I'm a type of guy like this. Sometimes some of the songs that I may get on, it wasn't probably even meant for me to get on. They might want somebody else. They yeah. missed them. Cause I never care. Mm -hmm. Long, hey man, hey man, hey man. People out there, hey man. We wanted to book uh, the Isley brother, but Kiki was. I went right in there and took care. <laughs> she, yeah. that bitch up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't. You ain't. I ain't never mad at something that I'm supposed to do that. So I, I, I'm saying that to say, man, Crit. When he put me on that first song, man, I was just so happy to be a part of the get a part of be a song. So mm -hmm. he always told me, he was like, man, whenever you do something, I'm gonna look out for you. Yeah. So my album, I came up with, I called him, man, he actually done three on it, on Self Made that 2. Does. And I was like, wow, man, he didn't charge me shit. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be telling his business like that, but he didn't <laughs> at the time and I was respecting. So when I came back on my album this time, yeah. man, whatever you want. Exactly. Whatever you want, man. And I want to do a song with such and such. I want to do a song with Toby. And I want to do a song with such and such. Hey, man, I got him. Give me this such and such. I man flew down here and took it. I love it. Woo. You know what I'm saying? And, man, he's quite a musician for real, too. Exactly. He's going to bring all them people in with them guitar. They got all kinds of shit going. <laughs> I'm like, man, listen, man, I just try to get the beat, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but it's great. And I love I love him in Dutch. Drummer Boy is my guy like that, too. Yes, sir. So, um, drummer. Drum my guy. So um now nah, man, that I, I like those experiences. Now my main producer is Mr. Lee. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got X File. He done um he done um We from Texas, which became a big record. And I love, right. man, when I give opportunities to other producers and then big things happen for because 'Cause I'm real picky. Now me and Mr. Lee, we go we in the dirt with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna go from the bottom with it. He my main producer. We're gonna argue mm -hmm. from from top to bottom. He might send five I don't want, he might send five I do want. But when I go mess with the other producers, I like the experience of just seeing what they offer. Man, one thing about Crit, and I leave it like this: said he, I love the way he was just like, "Oh, do you mind if I tell you a little something I want?" I was like, "Yeah." Man. <laughs> he was like, "Man, I, I want you to do this right here." I was like, "Man, let's do it." Yeah. A lot of producers, man, we go see them, and we from the OG standpoint, they really kind of scared to 
Man, say what you say, man. We came to jam with you. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm still like that. Break down Texas to me, though, Kiki, because uh-huh. from the outside looking in, it's like it's its own world in it the is. middle of the uh, country. It is. And break that down there. Why is it its own world and you can't mess with Texas? Man, I ain't never moving. Yeah. <laughs> I, ain't I don't blame moving. you. I, I don't moving. blame you. Man, let me tell you. Now, it's like this. Um... For me, I would say this. Hey, man, I'm as just as big as a star there mm-hmm. as a big star in the rest of the rest of the world. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, And they treat you like that. Like, mm-hmm. like, 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 if they love you, they love you. Yeah. Because Southern people like that anyway. We want yeah. you to have a piece of uh, uh, potato, sweet potato pie. That's right. You want a piece of, boy, go in there and get your chicken, get your soda out that cooler. That's yeah. it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Facts. And, and the people still kind of like that. Yeah. So when you a star, when you a, 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 a street star, a rap star, such, such, and I just think that um, for the most part, rappers and, or our artists, when they go out of town, they not revered like that. It's hard for them because they so revered so differently. Yeah. Man, do you know how big, Slim Thug big everywhere in the world. Yeah. Do you know how big he is there? <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying, y'all? Hey, hey, it, that's like any of, and, and we love our own. Like, yeah. flip any of these and poke it. We love these people. Yes, they sir. stars here. So I think, man, in Texas, I think it's just like that because it's like, you know, it's like the old saying. We be mad at each other all the time, but we'll jump on your ass. That's right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, we'll jump on you, though. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah, me and my cousin, we all going to fight no video, but we don't kick your ass exactly. together. Exactly. And Texas kind of like that, though. You know what I'm saying? And uh, even from the youngsters that's coming up, the South Walkers and all yes, them, such, such, it don't matter. It's like it, it don't matter how much they get out of line. We love them, and we're going to accept them back at home. You know what I'm saying? Travis Scott, we don't, we love you. We ready for you to come back outside. It's just like that. You know what I'm saying? Being around all of these legendary people and being a legend yourself, what is it that you think is in the secret sauce that allows somebody that's just a regular ghetto kid growing up in the hood to become a legend? Man, I think, man, because if you know our story, man, we come from nothing, nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? As far as the only thing, I think that a get a kids, a, we, we only was blessed with opportunity. Mm-hmm. It wasn't no... It, it, like I say, it wasn't no really no handouts, none of this here, man. I've seen people, man, that that tried to make it, that got back and with four, five hundred thousand dollars and couldn't make it. And yeah. then I just seen people who just didn't give up and just keep getting at it. So, man, a person growing up around us, they gonna see that that drive in in in. That that me, I perform in front of five or five thousand. The yeah. same way you just talking about that rodeo with yeah. seventy three thousand, I perform in front of seventy three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and a youngster, they're going to be able to see that. They're going to see the same passion and the energy, and that's what give them. And like I say, man, it's not always a good thing. It's a gift and a curse because mm. sometimes younger artists, they become stars quick in our city, and then they forget uh, to go. You know, that's one of the first things I push to the younger. Don't just fall in love with being no star here. It's the rest of a big world. Go to Atlanta. Go mess yeah. with bigger ranking. Yeah. Go mess with, go do the off the porch. Go see yeah. B-Hot. Yeah. Go do, that's why I'm here. Exactly. Man, I'm in late. I'm there. I need to go see B-Hot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need to go too. I you know what I'm saying? So that's the only thing. You know what I'm saying? But but with y'all having so many big ass uh, cities in Texas, you see what I'm saying? Because I used to hear stories of folks going platinum in Texas alone. Yeah, it can happen. My God. That's what's my now... It may be hard to get the game so crazy. But even whatever the set, I be trying to get people to get back to, man, you know we used to do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and man, I'm still, you know, hey, listen, I'm still a killer yeah. in, in that area. You know what I'm saying? And all of us, that's why, man, we, hey, man, we, you, you, y'all be wondering sometimes, man, such and such one, man, they ain't even thinking about coming to see you. Yeah. Man, they don't need, hey man, listen, man, you get a, hey man, I seen one of these rappers talking about that, man, just imagine, man, just being a youngster, man, you just making 20 grand a month. You can live. Yeah. Good. 15. Yeah. Man, I might not never come see your ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might, I don't need to come, man, I can exactly. eat me a steak. Come on. Man, I can go to Miami, and I can drive me a nice car, and exactly. I can take me a chick out. I don't need to see no goddamn B.I. Come on, you know come on. I'm and that's how they be thinking. But, you know, in order to, now now me, I, I want two stay. Yeah. You, know I'm you I want, want all the steaks. So I'm gonna go see B.I. I might get another steak. You know what I'm saying? So that's my mind frame, you know what I'm saying? So I just try to lead in that example. And sometimes I lead in the other example. Man, we ain't where I don't do that now. You know what I'm saying? I try to lead them, hey man, to get go. 
Exactly. You know, go see them people, man. Get yourself so. That's all. With that 2020 hindsight happening, man, I mean, what were some of the things that you realized over your career that you wish you would have changed or done differently? Man, I always tell people, man, I wish I would have had more discipline early. Mm. Um, you know, I wish I would have, you know, like now, like for instance, I don't like just I don't care if you were smoking, I don't smoke on the job. Yeah. I don't smoke on the road. Yeah. Like when I get on the road and ride. I don't stay, get no hotels, no more women, none of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so the maturity, I wish I would have matured up earlier. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing. Now, I wouldn't yeah. take nothing back because I love being little Kiki. Yeah. I had a great fucking time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I always tell these rappers, y'all, you ain't even had a good time. <laughs> you is the boss. You, you, you got bills and taxes. <laughs> You ain't, you ain't yeah. no well. You know what I'm saying? So I love being little Kiki. I had a good time. But if I could discipline up early up, man, I would have skipped over some of this long process that I'm in right now. Even from the start. Like, I haven't been on the road with drugs and smoking and drinking. and right. We can't get nothing on the road but a ticket yeah. with us. <laughs> I and I you. ain't no staying. Ain't no women waking up in the morning talking about where the money is, something happens. See, I done seen all this. Yeah. Going, them girls wake up with different stories in the morning. They yep. go to they had one story at night, then, so we don't stay nowhere. The hotel <laughs> fees and all that, this go to my drivers and all that. Come now. on. Give me five hundred dollars for travel and I'm finna get that to my driver. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I don't go no if I drive four hours, the car turning back around four hours and go right back. You know what I'm saying? I'm so the maturity level, I wish I'd have caught on to that quicker. And giving more people opportunities and you know what I'm saying, like we just was it was a gift and a curse from where we was from for what we was doing, you know what I'm saying? Like we was doing all this independent but we had no idea what the rest of the the game was like it took me a minute i'm still here at it well see answer me this though kiki because see one of the things that i done found out in this game that independence is a beautiful thing at the same mm -hmm. time too to be able to tell these folk to go to hell when you need to tell them if you can tell them talk to me if you can tell them to go to hell sometimes telling them to go to hell ain't always the right thing to do okay you know sometimes man you know it, it's it's I'm in a situation like that right now where I want to maximize doing music. Come on. I don't want to if 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 my music and and, and my sound and what I can do can take I want it to take me as further as it can take you. Yeah. I don't want to be in a situation no more where it's just taking me where I'm just getting enough out of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, man, you have to do independence can do that for you where it can just give you enough. Yeah. It's more, it's it's more if you want more. Now I'm not telling you to go sit. It take a long time to get to be able to talk the way that I'm talking. I've been yeah. through hell to be able to do that. But I'm in a situation where I just want to maximize everything. It ain't always about a major deal. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I do an album, I get to go talk to Beehive. Yeah. Yeah. Not just over here, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So you want to maximize everything. The 85 South and everything that I'm doing today is from me working and me maximizing, saying, let me put out a better album. Let me do more. Let me go to I Am Athlete. Let me go to work. Let me go sway. Let me see people. Let them, let them. Sometimes they look at us and don't even think we want to do that kind of work. I hear what you saying. They ain't really doing that. They legends, but they don't really come and do no interview. Nah, we do, and and that's what it is about. Sometimes maximizing. So independent is great, but but then off your name alone, though, Key, you can walk through all them doors anyway. When I talked to Donnie, he said, "A B Key gonna be in the city." I said, "Wait, tell that nigga to bring his ass down." <laughs> yeah, man. You, you know, sometimes, man, you 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 have to. Hey, man. When you get to this stage of your career, you know you have to. You have to be confident enough to know that you can still. And it's a lot of you know OG rappers, man. They not happy with where they at. Mm. They don't got shit to talk about. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They don't have nothing new to come. You know me. You know I got something to talk about. I got something to tell. I got a lot of new things. But at the same time, man, you 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 want to be. You want to feel great about going to do a, a lot of stuff. You want to do a lot of rappers, man. They just not where they want to be at as far as doing this music. They doing it, man. Rappers getting up. Don't get it twisted. See, and that's what pisses me off, Kiki. Because, see, my whole thing is, in Don Key's head, you got a whole encyclopedia of mm -hmm. history from SUC all the way up to 2022 right now mm -hmm. that needs to be told and needs to be shared and that millions of people want to know about. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And I see that so often that people be thinking that don't nobody care, but I'm thinking everybody cares. You just ain't told nobody shit. Yeah. yeah. Hey, man, sometimes, man, you have to surround yourself with people who give you that fire and that vision, too. Yeah. Sometimes you got to get out your own way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't come to see Beehive first. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's go see B.I. Yeah. Yeah, we are, he wanted, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm going, man, it could have been a year ago. I might have been, hey, man, let's just go on time. <laughs> Alright, be I the minute, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But now I'm like, man, now let's go yeah. take care of business. And then as we there, it's three, four more. Man, you have to. Hey, man, I can't even. I can be honest, saying I don't know if I would have did it all if it wouldn't have been presented to me to go do. I want to go do it, but yeah. sometimes you need that extra push. That's why mm. the the surround who you team. surround yourself and your team, Mason. You know, put some people around you that can bring something besides. Saying yeah to everything you want to do. Come on now. Yeah. What was your favorite time being Kiki though? Because you said you had some good at. Oh, so this your favorite time now? Yeah, yeah. What makes yeah. this time more special than the old time? Because I ain't scared of the police no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like being the police, we cool. They work for me now. I'm yeah. speaking to them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't hide no more. I'm mature. I'm kind of cool, man. I'm having a great time. Yeah. yeah. Honest, my kids big. I don't wait, yeah. man. I'm, I don't got to see your ass. In. I <laughs> might not see you in four five days. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> hey, man, listen. I got nice cars and I travel well. I'm having a great time. And I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not, I don't have no beefs that I don't know about. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I don't, I don't want. I ain't mad at nobody for real. You know what I'm saying. So I'm having a great time, really. Exactly. Yeah. What was your worst time then, Key? My worst time was was really during my warrant because I never knew what the time was gonna do for me. Because mm. I was getting older. You know what I'm saying. Like in my twenty, man, I got this warrant when I probably was. I got the warrant when I probably was 22. Mm-hmm. And I ain't get rid of it to 32. You know what I'm saying? So in the 20s, you still thinking like, if I go do me about three, two, three years, I'll be. <laughs> hey, when you start getting to the 30s, you start, man, I need these, three, years. these three, four years gonna take me down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's when it was my worst time of steady saying, Man, this shit getting close to town. Know how it's gonna turn out for exactly. you. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, three, four years at 32 fits to be coming back at 35. Ain't fits to be good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that kind of was my worst time. And then, man, my kids was getting bigger, man. And you would think the more they were getting bigger, the more I didn't want to leave them. Yeah, they needed me more. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like. I would have. I used to be saying, "Damn, I should have went and got this shit." Because every year I was telling myself, "I should have went and got this shit out of the way." Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I need to go get it out of the way. I need. And then just to be honest, if I would have knew, and it probably wouldn't work like. But if I would have knew, then it was gonna be that sweet. If I was gonna just do two, three bucks for it, I would have been with it did two, three bucks. But God worked it out a different way. So that was kind of my worst time. So when I came out of that. I still. I'm gonna tell another story right before we get. This was very important to me. Yeah, yeah. This was the worst time. Getting off of that serve, mm. and and even though I had beat that case and I had got my life back, I still was trapped in it. I see, I don't drink serve. Yeah, zero tolerance. Period. Not. I don't knock nobody. Yeah. If you want to pull your cup up tonight, that's your bit. I'm telling you a choice that I had to make for me to change my life. I haven't drunk it in 14 years. My God. Not a cup, not an ounce, not a sip, not a deuce, not a line, not a nothing. Yeah. That changed my whole complete life. Complete. I'm mad at God. Yeah. Man, why you ain't telling me to do that? <laughs> Early. <laughs> Man, you just now tell me. Yeah. I would have been a whole different person. You know what I'm saying? But that was that was very important in my transition too. You know what I'm saying? So my worst time not just getting rid of the warrant, still be kind of trapped up. And I ended up catching a case. Yeah. So when I caught a case, the judge who let me off, who went through all this when she was like, Man, I know you ain't coming by something. Yeah. Your story? I'm telling you right now, we beat you for this. You got it. We beat you for it. I'm going to file the 99 you. Shit. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to file the 99 you. And we beat it. And I just told myself, man, if I beat this case, man, for this drink, man, there's something I ain't got no drink. There's some sodas all this out of my studio. If I beat it, I never, ever drank it again. I didn't say I wasn't going to never smoke again. Yeah. I didn't say that. <laughs> I said I never drank again. I feel you. And I never did. Can you talk about that Texas culture, though, and how that syrup became such a strong part of the culture down there, man? Because when folks speak on it, I wouldn't it, like, take it out. Yeah. Because you would have to wipe away the complete history of what. Now, don't get this twist. People think we made them screw tapes that that. The screw tapes was made fast, man. 
<laughs> Jesus. People think we really. <laughs> Bruh, the tape's fast, man. The tape's is fast. Matter of fact, we didn't pra- we didn't did it hundred and fifty times. We not even right the first time. You know what I'm saying? Like the yeah, tape's yeah. fast, and then screw slow them down. But we drank it. We having a good time. <laughs> we gonna drink whether we make this tape or not. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. So people think that the drink was related to the tapes. Yeah, they think that. You know what I'm saying that. Man, the drink was getting dead before we even got a part of the culture. The OG, the old cats, yeah. our fathers and uncles, they was drinking lines. They been doing this. Syrup and soda changed the world. Mm. Not syrup. Syrup and soda yeah. changed the world. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's what got everybody. That's what, you know what I'm saying? All the way from the, man, listen, I don't care what they say you can have. You can mark this. I don't care where you at. I don't care what city you in, what state. We are the drink capital, man. Yeah. Stop playing. You know Whoa. what I'm saying? We drinking this before everybody, way before, and the syrup and soda. We didn't get that from nobody. We got that from us. We was drinking syrup in boom forms. Mm. Snow, uh, Snowberry Creek, mm. Wild, Island, Wild Island, yeah. uh, 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 Sung Peak Peach. This was a food. We yeah. drunk syrup and cheap wine. Anybody that's from back of the game, they know that this is it. Yeah, yeah. Syrup, and then we switched over to syrup and soda when Big Red was in the red and white bottle. <laughs> <laughs> when Sun Kiss was in that bottle, new grape, all these different sodas, and that's when the syrup and soda, the syrup and soda era started. So the South Side was an area for we call these kind of words like parlaying, mm-hmm. Kool Aiding, yeah, that's chilling, relaxing, syruping, drinking, smoking, messing with the chicks, riding, having a good time, parlaying. We took that parlaying and put it on these tapes where we were enjoying each other hoods. These tapes were hood tapes. Yeah. Third Ward, Dead End, this particular person. And we asked for those tapes like, man, let me hear B high tape. Yeah. Not for the North Side, no other time. Just we want to hear B high tape. It's yeah. not for the world or nothing. The tapes used to just have all songs on it. And then at the end of side B, Screw would let you do a little freestyle. <laughs> and it wasn't nothing made. Me and Pat started taking that shit and doing the whole tape freestyle. My God. And all we were on these tapes were talking about was our culture yeah. and what we were doing. Hey, yeah, man, we chilling. Because you talking all through the tape. Yeah. Yeah, man, we had such and such, man, pour another one. And we were just talking about this syrup. And, man, those tapes became the culture. And... That's when it became it became the thing, man. All the way from the haircuts, man. Yeah. Hey, man, these haircuts named after me, Lil Kiki. Y'all got that Lil Kiki <laughs> outside fade and yeah. all this, man. So that's how those tapes. I always tell people this: people that go do them interviews and go talk about the city and go to the, they want to take the tapes out. Mm. Can't take the tapes out. No, you want to take the tapes out when you ain't got none when you weren't a part of it. Yeah. Can't take the tapes out. They very instrumental because they were the soundtrack to what was happening in the streets, even from the north side, south side beat. That's how you were finding out. Yeah. On the tape. Yeah. That's who you finding out who coming out the shop. That's who you finding out who driving this. That's what these names are being created. Corey Blunt, such a, that's what we getting to hear. That's how I heard of Sibo. Yeah. Spice One. Yeah. These ain't people that were major artists that we heard them because they were mainstream like a uh, Osley Brothers or something. Yeah. We heard them from Screw. Sibo is Screw favorite. That's his favorite artist. Yeah. E-40s, all these different independent rappers that we heard first, we heard them on screw tapes. It was a time in my life I didn't hear nothing but screw tapes. I didn't even hear the radio. Yeah. What kind of a sick nigga would try to take the screw tapes out of the history? They like to, the screw tapes is a very significant part of history, man. So it's a lot of people where some people, their props don't align with the screw tapes. Uh, and it, you, it sometimes, man, like I hear people come do interviews, man, and and it's different people that come do interviews from our city, and, and y'all will be asking them a million questions, like, yeah, man, y'all making so much money, man, and man, how was this here? And y'all are going by five minutes, but that question is really, what about the the screw tapes and stuff, <laughs> though? You know, sometimes when y'all show, y'all will be, yeah, man, we ain't heard about that money. Boy, y'all sold a lot of records and stuff. Whoo! But what about <laughs> we had heard about the tapes and stuff though with the yeah. shirt? And it keeps resulting back to, you know, 
this supposed to be this, this supposed to be this, but that's a part of the culture. And everybody, you know, like, it ain't no north side, south side thing. It don't have to be that. It's just different people, man, that didn't get to experience that part of the culture and they don't know about it and they just want it to kind of go away. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it was legendary why, as hell. Why is it still 2022 and we talking about something from 94, 95, 96 and we done done this? Because without this, there's no this. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So me, I just come and I try to praise all of it. I love everything. I think the Swish House movement, the SUC movement, the Rap a Lot movement, the Suave House movement, the Rec Shop movement. I think all those movements play a very, very big part in the significance of Houston. What Jay and Rap a Lot done over here, how UGK came entwined, how the SUC done this, how the Swish House picked up on that, how Rick. It's all entwined, and I just don't think I leave none out, and I just don't want nobody to leave. I was out. When it comes to that SUC from the outside looking in, see, I'm so intrigued by it because you see DJ Screw as a young man that laid the smack down. Mm -hmm. And that is so difficult to do in this music industry without the backing of majors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So to see a man come in there and lay the smack down, I just always am in, intrigued with the grassroots movement part of it. Because basically, screw formula mm -hmm. is the formula for that young black man that's trying to amount to something with no damn resources. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? How do you grow that thing? How do you grow that movement? How do you get people intrigued? Do you say, okay, that boy Kiki, he snapping like hell. Let me go get him in here. Let me get a few more folk like Kiki and we gonna just talk about our streets and crank it all the way up from there and snowball it. Organic. I'm with you. It just happened organic. Like, 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 um, I would say this from my standpoint. My neighborhood was a neighborhood with 50 or 60 boys. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't, 34, whatever it is, I'm talking about <laughs> boys everywhere down a whole block corner. And I'm talking about from ages of 14 to 25. There's mm -hmm. a lot of, and I bring that up because we were, we were gate jumping, rock pumping, rock selling. We were doing all that. And when we started freestyling, it meant something to them for me to be tough. Come on. Man, I'm you, you better go out. You know, this, yeah. this, man, because, you know, we wanted to get that fat Pat before we we wanted him. We don't even know what he looked like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He a myth. Yeah. You know, fat Pat was a myth. He got the freestyle. He got the freestyle king trophy. <laughs> he five, he probably like six years older than me. So when yeah. I'm about 16, Pat by 22, I want to party him. Yeah. I don't even know what he looked like. Because my, my neighborhood, they want me to tear his ass up. Because we freestyling, man, we started freestyling. We didn't have instrumental. We freestyled with words still playing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the words still playing. You know what I'm saying? We don't have an instrumental. That's by the time we got the screw how we tough as hell, though. Yeah. Man, we tough. So, so this is what I'm saying. We want Fat Pat. We want his ass. Mm -hmm. He got the trophy we want in. And that's what I'm trying to say. All these different narratives are things that's happening organically without us having a meeting of you gonna battle Fat Pat, we gonna have an album one day. We don't know none of this happening. Yeah. We just that's even going to me and Fat Pat and the reason why I bring Pat up to there is no more significant purpose people to the uh to the freestyle culture than me and Pat. We are the kings. Exactly. We want we built this. I don't everything else I love every single per Fat Pat and Lil Kiki, you ask anybody in that city they're gonna tell you that was the two top two to do everything. So we it it snowballed on its own. Just it became an anticipation thing. Man, we want the pat. We want the key. And that started to go to the north side and go to this end. Until you gotta understand, man, people were starting to we were starting to be people's favorite artists and we were some screw tapes. Mm. Man, people tell people, man, people tell you right now, Fat Pat, they favorite artists. He ain't got number one album in a bunch of screw tapes. They ain't heard shit, but yeah. they love him. You know what I'm saying? So I always tell people, I think the great thing about that is we didn't plan it. Yeah. yeah. We just, I always just, man, we ain't playing nothing. What was, what kind of person was DJ Screw? What was his mind at when he was masterminding one all One track. <laughs> Screw, <laughs> Screw. <laughs> Screw one track, mind it, man. Table, scratch, record. <laughs> 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 ah. Now, Screw is, um, uh, 
Screw is a uh, very entrenched into his craft. Yeah. And what I mean by that, ain't no really no screw in years without a car. Mm. Not that he can't afford it. Mm -hmm. He don't even drive. It, it, he don't even come outside. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he dickies and teachers. Hey, man, it's 24 hours in a day, man. Screw in that house 20 hours. Yeah. The other foe, he might be getting some jacking about it. Like, screw, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So we, it was funny because it was funny, man. When Screw started making that money, and he finally came my side, this was funny. You know what I'm saying? Like he got his chain on, he got an Impala, he doing all type of shit. Yeah. Because Screw is far from that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the house, craft, and I always tell people, man. People think that I'm. I say I'm the captain of the SUC. Like Screw has great friends, probably friends that was more his friends than me. Yeah, for real. I ain't saying me and Screw's the best friend. Screw got D moles and different people that got different tapes. They love them. I'm the biggest rapper from the from a music standpoint. Yeah, that had the, the well, I wouldn't even say the big, the most significant one from because Pat passed mm -hmm. and I had to keep the torch really, really going. So Screw, man, you know he just, you know. If Screw was alive, people always don't think, I think he would have transitioned. But when he was alive, yeah. Screw had no plans on worrying about the radio or none of yeah. that shit. You know what I'm saying? And he really didn't have, hey man, Screw rolling. Come on. A different kind of rolling. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey man, opening that door from seven to nine and doing by 1500 2000 them at $10 okay. and doing that two, three, four times a week. Nigga. It had, <laughs> it had pretty nice, you know. What I'm and then he's conservative, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Screw not, you know. He got late, man. When Screw first started with the tapes, it was about going to Sam's and getting Screw's a grinder. While y'all yeah. out there buying them, I'm finna go ahead and buy about five thousand these Maxwells. Exactly. I'm finna press them. Come on, and they finna all go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and we loved it too. And yeah, yeah. nobody, man, Screw don't owe me one dollar. Come on, nothing. The movie. Oh, the movie. What's going on? Why you brought the movie up? I had to bring the movie up. The movie was a great thing. I really, really respect everybody that had something to do with it because the family gave them. It's just that when you get the expectation was so different. Uh, because you didn't let us see a little taste yeah, of what we it, thought we were going to do. <laughs> and when we didn't get that taste, it kind of just... But it was great. I love chill. I love the family. I love what they done. I I led to look at it from a different standpoint. I was on the on this side. People think I made so much. I ain't make a quarter off of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't make it because it didn't go where we needed it to go yet. I just wanted to support it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For the family. I just really want to see that story get told. Do I think it got told the way it need to? No. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna tell y'all my story. It'll be the same. Come on now. <laughs> Come on. It, it'll be the same. <laughs> and some of these stories. It'll be the same. Some you of these stories meant to be told over and over again. But too. man, I, I just think that man, we needed a giant resource for that. Uh, we had. I was happy that somebody that we was going finally saying let somebody do it. Yeah. See, when I got I got to go do the organ, they mad at me. You know, yeah. key in it. He getting some type of money. I ain't getting the goddamn quarter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I gotta go do the argument for it. And my argument to the people was, we gonna it's, we gonna keep saying that that ain't the person. Why are we letting them do? How, it ain't gonna. We're not gonna never be happy with nobody yeah. coming to do it. So we gotta let somebody go ahead and do, do it, man. It. And the family they agree to it. I just think that the people, the fans, they if you wouldn't have let them see a little bit, yeah. They wouldn't have had that particular expectation. They had <laughs> NWA Tupac Biggie expectation. <laughs> and they seen a little clip, and the little clip was looking kind of groovy. Yeah. Shit. They ready for <laughs> they ready for goddamn box office. Exactly. And then, then, then. We were like, ah, damn. You know, it did some type of way. It's my fault. Key, you did it. I know it was Key. He did something. I oh, bet I didn't do a damn thing. Man, but I think we still have an opportunity for yeah. it to happen. It ain't it ain't dead by far, you know what I'm saying? And they did a good job too, man. I just think that screw that you need a big budget for that shit. Yeah. No, that's real. You need to go get cube or something. For real. What you doing about your story though, Key? Come on now. My book coming out in in a month is not my story. Okay. It's my it's my brand story. It's legend talk. It's gonna be great. I wasn't ready to do me yet. Because my my book is gonna it's gonna be. I just told you 
a five percent of it. I yeah. would be wanted for <laughs> all type. Now, and I just think I've had lots of opportunity, lots of offers to go ahead and do me, which I think could turn into something big. But I'm kind of like, uh, I'm kind of like eighty three percent into my story still. Yeah, yeah. I got one more little part to finish off, and then I let y'all have it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm kind of working on my story, but man, um. It's gonna be great. The book game is something that I'm trying now. It's coming out on audio and um, hard copy on my day, July yeah. 13th. Right. Um, and um, bro, I talk shit all the time for a living. Yeah. I just decided to put it on paper. So what are you talking about in the shit, book? Talking shit, <laughs> talking shit, talking shit, talking just, just, just talking crazy. Really, it's about life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's about life, and it's about like it's for anybody. Mm -hmm. It's for the cameraman. It's for this man. It's for the man out there drinking coffee. It's the lady taking her kids to school in the morning. Fortune 5. You can get it. It's just parts in that shit like, are you a winner? I got chapters in there called Assets and Liabilities. Mm -hmm. And basically, I'm in there saying some shit like, you know, this woman This woman is fine. She beautiful. She's, I'm talking about she got if all this here, but she really a liability. She ain't mm -hmm. got no hustle. Now, this other one over here, you know, she going to call and argue with the people about your insurance. She done, put, she done fix your resume up for you, this, 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 this. Your kids you got for another woman, she done comb they had since, but that's an asset. Come on. So I just change it. We just talking about shit like that, assets mm -hmm. and liabilities. I got another one in there called, like, like it got something to do with uh, uh, sweep your porch before you clean my closet. Come on now. You know all kind of sayings like yeah. that, and I'm just and my audio is just like this. That's hard. That's hard. Just like I went to go do it regular, mm -hmm. boy. I got in there. I couldn't get that <laughs> shit. I said, man, how do they do that? Man, reading that book, man. I'm, Fuck hey, that. man, because the way I did the book, I did it off of an app. Mm. I apped it. Okay. I just talked shit. Yeah, yeah. Sent it to a transcriber, That's and right. they put it all in book form. So when I got ready to come back, what they had to do was put it in book form, and then they bring it back to me to read to do the audit. <laughs> I was in the book studio. I was in the book an hour, <laughs> and I was on the I was on the intro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I come up with man, my God, I'm not finna be to do this shit. So it just dawned on me. I was like, you know what? And I'm finna use the fucking audio exactly. that I used to do it. So I left it with my engineer, mm -hmm. and he, <laughs> now the audio is ready. And that, it sounds just like me and you doing the interview, just like this here. That's and hard. it's cool, man. Like I say, one of the big things about the book, open it in any chapter. Mm -hmm. 14, 11, 9, because it's about life. When Legend you, talk. When you said you looked up and Drake was, you know, breaking bread because he had to get some of that Kiki sauce, what was going through your mind at that time, too, when you see the greatest rapper of right now saying, let me go ahead and reach back to another go. That was full circle for me for like, cause as much as I tell y'all um, the, the importance of the relevance from all those samples, it, it, it really is. Of course you're gonna get discouraged sometime. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> no, that don't let me get none of the money. <laughs> so, so, so to see him just reach out and show some love. Man, that was a strange call. Yeah. You know, like my distributor called me like, man, you know Drake and the people reach that? I was like, what they talking about? <laughs> they were like, man, they wanna pay you for um, the song with the November. Yeah, yeah. What, what, whatever, what, whatever that, that the song with, when Drake first came out. Mm -hmm. And Drake just coming out on that, you know, I'm draped up, I'm dripped out. He didn't even sample it. My God. And he looked out, and I and to me that was just full circle for me saying, for what I meant. Same thing with the logic. Yeah, man, that logic called me. That was a strange call. Yeah, logic go text me out the blue right now. Just something strange about. Um, hey man, what do you think about um, the Godfather, <laughs> the movie? And then me and this man having a three hour text about the Godfather. Just somebody. And this man just in the music business. So he was like, man, I want to use that knocking those down. Mm. I'm like, really? He was like, but this is what I want to do. I don't want to sample it. I want you to go in there and say it again for me. Damn. Went in there and said them again. And paid me handsomely. My God. And went to war with Def Jam for not paying on time. Woo! Logic. So I said all that to say, when those things come back and happen, you know what I'm saying? I feel great about it is what it is. With the pimp using knocking doors down, how did that song go around that time? What was your mind? Well, because me and pimp fell out. Oh, 
song. About that song. <laughs> Pimp B. Oh, that's my brother. Red Boy, which was which is bond manager, um, and he was doing manager for Pimp at the time. He came with the song, knocking mm. those down. He was like, Pimp wanna get you on this song. Well, it's my hook, it's me, it's my sample. Yeah. So what Pimp was talking about, <laughs> I really didn't want no part of it. You know what I'm saying? Like he do it immediately. He do he it. Him. Cuss everybody he cuss everybody out. He do it him. I'm like, man, I'm not fit to do. I don't want in. Let you do it. That's what you do. He didn't got a whip. I want this kind of verse. I'm like, man. So I told Red Boy, Red Boy, you know that ain't what I'm talking about when I'm saying knocking door. And Red Boy was like, man, just do you. Yeah. So I just did me. Yeah. Oh, he he won't be to just do me. <laughs> so, man, I had to get up, go through hell to get him on chunk up to do. Oh. He did it. That's my boy. He did it. He missed the video. Uh, we had to shoot it without him. Yeah. I seen him at the airport and he just told me, I was mad at you. <laughs> I say, man, can't nobody else tell me this shit but you, man. You know what I'm saying? But that's my dog. And the, and the song, and what's so crazy, man, everything's so crazy. Chunk of the Dudes might be one of my biggest... It is. It might be one of my biggest streamers. So Yeah. Yeah. Break down that Chunking Up the Deuces, man. Man, um, I was at the Swiss house. We was we, People always think, man, the Swiss house deal was a deal that I had with Ferris really you know mm -hmm. T Ferris and um it was it was um brokered through Switch House G Dash shout out him Michael Watts and um we was um we just did that ABA the album for the album mm -hmm. a killer and we did Gangsta Grill mm -hmm. with DJ Drum and um what up though Drum Drum my bro yeah. uh, and we was trying to figure it out you know what I'm saying like what kind of single we was going we was um the anticipation was big. Everybody was waiting to see if I was going to fall off or what I was going to do. I done signed with Switch House. And we was just trying to, um, the chunk of the deuce, man, actually, it had a different beat. It was a Twilight Zone beat. Mm. And we couldn't get a sample. We couldn't get the sample cleared. And we was trying to say, it was just me and Paul. And we was just like, man, right then, that was our circle, sort of. You know, the Switch House yeah. circle, the Rap a Life circle, Bun. I was on Draped Up with Bun. And yeah. all. It, it was kind of going in a circle. So, we got Pimp and Bun. They was fresh in what they was doing too, because Pimp was just back home, and it was a. So we put it together, man. And to be honest, man, it did something for me that I wasn't expecting. What it did for me was help me reunite the city mm -hmm. back together from the north and the south. Cause we still was on shaky ground, man. You're gonna have some people, man, that ain't gonna never change their mind. Yeah. But for the most part. <laughs> It was a good thing to realign in the city, man. I do well on the north and the south, though. Yeah, yeah. So we good. Yeah. Switch your house, man. Can you talk about that label and just that team over there? Because it was a lot of talented folks over there, too, getting big. Power Wild is my brother and my favorite, and Power Wild taught me a lot. Yeah, yeah. Power Wild taught me how to kiss babies. He taught me how to stay. I used to be so impatient. I'm ready to go. Power Wild is a real professional. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's my brother from another mother. I love him to death. He can have this shirt that I got on right here. Um, he uh, when I went and got locked up when I came, my pal took me on tour with him. Was giving me six, seven, eight thousand dollars a show. I didn't have a quarter. Mm. Uh, man, Paul Wild used to be leaving his Bentley at my house. He only remembers over there. <laughs> Got to call him and take it back. <laughs> Paul too nice. Yeah, he the nicest person in the world. You know what I'm saying? He always gonna tell everybody I'm his favorite rap. Paul used to be doing interviews and I had to bump him under the table and stay talking. Stop talking about me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, he gonna be, he gonna, hey man, he doing shit like, man, if y'all not gonna let Kiki come on 106, uh, I ain't going. Come uh, on. Uh, uh, um, I'm going to in the basement, Kiki got to go. Yeah. Man, he did all that. And what's his main thing is, is, don't ever do a show with Paul because he 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 signing every autograph. <laughs> it's five thousand now. It's supposed to be five thousand. <laughs> we on number forty four hundred. Lord, please let him out of here. You know what I'm saying? And he taught me that never missing, always on time. Yeah. And G Dash, it he can't do no wrong with me. I mm -hmm. needed fifty thousand dollars. A guy Jay that came got me. Yes, sir. T. Ferris is my brother. I love him to death. We didn't fought tooth nail and everything. <laughs> no, T. And I still answer the phone and do anything he asked me to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's my brother. He the one came and got me. And uh, that was a great. Michael Watts yeah. is my second favorite DJ behind Screw because Michael Watts is a bad mother. 
That's right. Don't <laughs> get it twisted. Ooh. Ain't nobody screw. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I tell people they different, man. Screw is 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 super. Watts got more things that he could probably do than screw because it was more things to do that came. Yeah. Studio and mixing. Yeah. Screw wasn't all at the studio with the book. Screw is the uh, monster of sound and and era and time and and we didn't know how to make that song go in that other song. And I was like, I ain't saying you throw that doing it now, yeah, but yeah. what about when we never seen it before? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, that's a difference when, yeah, everybody can scratch and chop and slow and bring it back now. Yeah. But what about when we never saw that before? Come on. <laughs> what about when this music has been forced on us? So I always tell people that's a difference, but I love Watts. He done a lot for my career. ABA, man, I'm five foot eight. Watts used to have me feeling six five. Yeah, yeah. Man, Watts had me feeling like I'm six six. <laughs> he gonna have you feeling. She's sounding crazy. G Dash, yeah. man. Me and G Dash still business partners to this day. Yeah. And me and Fred, so the switch out thing for me, man, I'm a G, man. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a real street, so it ain't no outside noise that can really, you know, I stand up, I am the captain, and um, I understand the assignment as when I make big decisions, everybody ain't going to always be happy, but I can live with it. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel like Texas would have been different if Screw would have lived, Pimp would have lived, Pat would have lived, and everybody else, man? <sighs> Man, man, that's a good question. I always get asked that. I be wondering what Screw would a high school, because Screw is a, Screw stiff. As far as what I mean by that is, he believe in what he believe in. I think he would have transitioned over, but he believe in what he believe in. Mm -hmm. As far as Pat, I always tell people, Pat would have been a star. Mm -hmm. You can't not tell him he ain't a star. Yeah, yeah. Pat is a star in his head, man. Come on. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, man, Pat is a star. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So he was going to be, I think he was going to be a star. And man, come on, man. Pimp was well into his shit talking. Yeah. It was going well for him. You know what I'm saying? I think he was taking shit talking to another level. Fact. So I just think that they all would have carried on in that sometime, man. And um, I always commend Bun, man, for, for keeping going. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, for keeping going. Because Pimp is a very instrumental in what he do is, you know, musician and playing shit. That's so right. It take a lot for Bun to be that type of partner with somebody and keep on going. So, yeah, man, I think the city would have been, and 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 sometime, man, I think us missing them, I had to fight sometimes. Sometime when Pat was gone, that was some of my motivation. Yeah, Pat yeah. was my mo. Hey, man, if I hear about Pat and got a new hook or a new song, yeah. I won't end. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It ain't really been like that for a long time. So you have to find different motivations. But, you know, I think we would have been even greater. Okay. I got to ask you about just now in hip hop in general, you got a lot of young artists that mm -hmm. are just being killed and murdered along the way, man. How do you think that's impacting hip hop? And why do you think it's so prevalent now versus back in the day? Man, I be telling the people, I, I like haters instead of ops. Yeah. Give me some haters. I, I, the, the haters part of that, well, I was cool. They didn't hurt you. <laughs> the ops, I, I don't, I, I don't want to be died with the ops. You know what I'm saying? The ops is terrible. Yeah. Man, I don't, I think, man, that, man, man, I stay having to explain this shit. Y'all know this shit ain't the same, right? Yeah. yeah. They be thinking it's the same. Bro, it's not, it looked the same. The yeah. streets in the rap game. We got the same clothes on. We got the same type. Man, this is business over here. Yeah. You need to live over here to get the money. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you, I don't understand, man. I just think that, man, um, man, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I really don't have the answer for it because at the end of the day, I love young music too. Because mm -hmm. I got a 20, I got a 20, I got a, a 22 year old. Yeah. He's flying. Is he want. Hey man, I'm singing these songs. I know them. Yeah. These no caps and I love these. Look yeah. Shoot them up, bang, bang. That's what it is. <laughs> hey, hey man, and listen, I be so sad because I be saying shit out this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't want this for them, but I'm like, man, I'm, hey man, I love all these. Yeah. Like, but, but I will tell y'all this here. Man, social media, it, it killed us. Yeah. And that's what happened with a lot of these young artists. We really like you till we see you. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, you's a real moron. Like, you's a real, <laughs> hey, you be really tripping. You know what I'm saying? So, if we didn't see that, we probably would be, and that's what I tell people sometimes, man. Sometimes your own mouth and you can't get out your own way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're a great artist. Yeah. And, and, and it can be vice versa. Sometimes, man, you might not be that great with the music. Yeah. 
But your but, personality but your out personality the damn chain. What you're doing and how you're doing and how you're helping and how you get down and your work ethic. People, man, it's a lot of rappers getting money that, man, we wouldn't goddamn pay a quarter to him, but we love what they do. Come on. So I, I just think that, man, from a standpoint, it's all about your approach. And I think some of them, they coming in with just what music sell for me. And I think some of them try to live it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Live it. Everything is, it's so easy to be on gang now. You mm -hmm. remember, like, you can just be on gang. Yeah. Man, you can be on gang easy. <laughs> easy now. So, and I just think that some of these different aspects and some of these things, they happen to live up to it, man. And for the most part, I hope it passes. I don't want nothing to kill hip hop. Yeah. So, I just I hope it passes over eventually. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I hope it passes over. As a legend yourself, Kiki, who were the artists that you looked up to that inspired you, that you jammed to personally, just coming up in the game and just being a Q. listener? Yeah. See, man, I had different. I grew up on the Run DMC first. Okay. Hey, if you couldn't sing Peter Piper, Pick Pepper, Run Right, if you couldn't do that, you really <laughs> wasn't. This was our battle because you seen yeah. LL rock the because you seen the whole thing because you this was our bet rock him because you said so I grew up East Coast because that's what we heard first rock him I grew up um um uh, Eric B rock him jamming all that LL Run DMC Fat Boy into that I was until the cussing rap came out oh. <laughs> Come on, man. It's over, man. The cussing rap out is over. <laughs> man, the cussing rap? Shit. Yes, sir. Easy. <laughs> it's over, man. It's over. Then that cussing rap went to Dre now. We smoking in the car now. <laughs> man, it's a, it's a rap. It, it's, it's over. So I I went just in that row. And and before that, I'm gonna tell you. I walked down the street jamming Computer Love. Yeah, yeah. I went from Computer Love to uh, Peter Piper, Pick Pepper, Run, Rock, Ryan, <laughs> to Fuck the Police. Come on. To goddamn It's a G thing. I went straight to that road, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> straight just like that. Until I became my own self. Yeah. And then with the listen to what I do. Yeah. And, and like I say, when we made it to Screw Tapes, that's how we got turned on to Spice One. Yeah. yeah. And, and all that, man. I don't, man. Come on, man. Spice one of them still come to the city. We in there. Yeah. These niggas way older than us. I don't care how many people let I'm going to see them. Spice them was just in the city. So be legit. Yeah. He's still my partner. You know what I'm saying? So I went straight like that. Love. Yeah. I was a love nigga, man. Eyes, <laughs> listen, all this here. <laughs> love. East Coast, West Coast, and then back uh, to us. Okay, and I'm about to start rounding this thing up, but I got another good one, though, Kiki. As a legend, man, what is that like for you being in Kiki's shoes, man? I mean, are you a prisoner to Don Key, or is that just one and the same? I'm a prisoner. <laughs> Sometimes I'm sad, man. <laughs> man, because I like to be normal. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Like, this was my first year I had to come out the grocery store. Yeah. Damn, man, I love the grocery store, man. I'm a grocery store nigga. Yeah. Can't go in there no more. Damn. Um, Man, I'm still the loudest at the Little League field. <laughs> I scored every touchdown with my baby. That's every, right. When he went in, I went in, too. <laughs> um, I'm still kind of normal, but it, it adjusting because, like I say, social media made us much more about popular. Yeah. So now, the reason why I'm saying stuff like grocery store, because now I go in the grocery store, and when I come out and look at my Instagram, they, I'm on there. Damn. They done took a picture on the aisle, by the car, all kinds of shit. Like that. I'm like, damn. You know, so, um, and and I'm saying that people might from a rural right, like, what? In our city, when you're, yeah. it's like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, And at the same time, man, I still enjoy getting to be who I am. And at the same time, my people be telling me all the time, man, you um, you too humble, you too. Because I like to be normal, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm like cool and man, you know, be, man, I might have on all this jury and I'm at the store. Yeah. Man, you can't go to the store like that no more, <laughs> man. I'm like, so I get caught in between the two. But at the same time, I, I, I'll go back to realizing who I am. Like, hey, when I'm at them shows, it's all business. Yeah. I don't smoke. I don't do none of that shit at the show, man. It's all business. Eyes wide. I'm trying to get everybody in this car back to their family, man. Thanks. I don't care what it takes. I don't want to do. Hey, man, when we get back to the city now, you want to go? Yeah. Do whatever. That's your business. But I want to get you back to your family and all that. So on that side of it, I understand being Kiki. On one side of it, I'm still adjusting, man. Exactly. I'm still trying to just be cool. Okay. And lastly, advice. 
to the next generation coming up. What you got to tell these folk, man? Whatever you do, do it time five. It's overcrowded. My God. If you go to studio one time a week, go seven. Mm. If you got be at pop pop head, do five more in that day. Come on. Everything you got to do, it got to be time 10. That's right. And get you one of them men right there who Come holding on. that camera. Come on. If you ain't got one of them with you, you really out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you even get no money. Thanks. <laughs> so that's what I would just tell them, man, just um, humble up. Yeah. Get you some people around you that don't mind packing the bags and picking up and doing the driving, man. Sometimes, man, man, you got to get the right people around you in order to elevate you to be who you want to be. So I always, and like I told them by myself, find you some discipline early. Even if it just starts saying no. Like, for instance, man, I'm not smoking right now for yeah. the one hour. I'm yeah. just not. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Shit, that's, you got to have some kind of discipline. So I would just say, man, grow you some discipline <laughs> with whatever you're going to do and do whatever you're doing during the time five. Stay up an extra hour. Exactly. Drive an extra two, you know, and pay a little bit more. You know, do a Facebook ad for $50, I'll do it for 75 Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Just stretch it out because you're going to need that. The game is crowded. Don't nobody want to have car washes and beeper shop. No, everybody's a rapper. That's right. A podcaster, a manager, Thanks. a beat make. Everybody's in this here. Come on. So you got to do a little more. Kiki. Big salute. Appreciate you coming through this <laughs> thing, boss. Right.